Hello developers, how are you this wonderful day? Uh, if this is your first time in my channel, my name is Eleftheria and if you ask me what I'm doing today, well, I thought I could record my solutions in debugging from Freaker Camp. Before that, I did also the regular expressions and the CSS, Flexbox and Grid, but now I think it's time also for debugging, because why not? Well, before we jump into the video, please share and subscribe. And if you did that, then let's go! Well, let's see the first one, which says Use the JavaScript console to check the value of a variable. Both Chrome and Firefox have excellent JavaScript consoles, also known as DevTools, for debugging your JavaScript. You can find developer tools in your Chrome's menu on Web Console in Firefox's menu. If you are using a different browser or a mobile phone, we strongly recommend switching to desktop Firefox or Chrome. Well, I'm going to be using Google Chrome and I think it's going to be ok. The console.log method, which prints the output of what's within in parentheses to the console, will luckily be the most helpful debugging tool. And I agree because I've already worked a little bit with debugging and I think that you see, it is an excellent tool. Placing it as a strategic point in your code can show you the intermediate values of variables. It's good practice to have an idea of what the output should be before looking at what it is. So think before look at the result, before looking at the result. Having checkpoints to see the status of your calculations through your code will help narrow down where the problem is. And we have an example with hello world and it just says console.log hello world. And now in the fifth line it says use the console.log method to print the value of the variable a where noted in the code. Okay, so I'm just going to do um, a console console yes dot log and then inside the parentheses I'm going to have an A and probably a semicolon and then we are ready to go and everything is correct I'm happy about that so let's continue with the second challenge understanding the differences between the freecode cam and browser console okay sounds interesting you may have noticed that some freecode cam JavaScript challenges include their own console this console behaves a little differently than the browser console you used in the last challenge. The following challenge is meant to highlight some of the differences between the FreeCodeCam console and the browser console. First, the browser console. When you load and run an ordinary JavaScript file in your browser, the console.log statement will print exactly what you tell them to print to the browser console the exact number of times you request it. In your in-browser text editor, the process is slightly different and can be confused at first. Okay. Values passed to console.log in the text editor block run each set of tests as well as one more time for any function calls that you have in your code. This lends itself to some interesting behavior and might cheat, cheat you in the beginning because a logged value that you expect to see only once may print out many more times depending on the number of tests and the values being passed to those tests. Alright, I get that. So if you would like to see only your single output and not have to worry about running through the test cycles, you can use console.clear. Alright, so what we have to do is to use the console.log to print the variables in the code where indicated. So open your test browser, ok, use console.log I will do that. Okay, and it says that I should print the output to. Okay, got it. And then I use console.clear uh, in the text line to print the output one only once. Okay, so the next thing is console clear. I'm going to copy and then paste it here and in the ninth line it says use console.long to print the output 1. Okay, so let me 
copy this one more time and then inside the parentheses I'm going to have the output one okay semicolon and then just um, around the test yes and they are correct I think that so far the exercises are not very hard but I'm still in the second and now I'm going to the third one so let's keep going use type of to check the type of a variable you can use type of to check the data structure of type or if a variable this is useful in debugging when working with multiple data types if you're thinking you are adding two numbers but one is actually a string the result can be unexpected been there done that type errors can lurk in calculations or functions calls especially take care when you're accessing and working with external data in the form of a javascript object like json so you have an example with type of and then some different consoles and we can see the result with the output now javascript recognizes sim primitive or immutable data types like boolean, null, undefined, number, string and symbol and one type for mutable items like objects. Note that in JavaScript arrays are technically a type of object and yes. Add two console.log statements to check the type of each of the variables 7 and 3 in the code. Alright, so I'm going to the fifth line and I'm going to use the console.log Alrighty, and we have to use the type of, I guess at least, uh, first parenthesis and then type of 7, okay, 7, and semicolon, and then I guess that I can have one more time the console.log with type of again, but this time I'm going to have the 3. And let's see if this is correct. Okay, and it is. Catch misspelled variables and function names. The console.log and type of methods are the two primary ways to check intermediate values and types of program output. Now it's time to get into the common forms that bugs take. One syntax level issue that fast typers can commiserate with is the humble spelling errors. Oh yes, I've done many times like this, silly mistakes. Anyway, fix the two spelling errors in the code so the networking capital calculations work. Probably this is written wrong. I mean, maybe this net... Okay, net working capital. Okay, maybe we're missing something? Yes like the receivables i can see that this is wrong so i'm gonna copy and paste it here and the payables again i think there is an extra s here so let's check this one and we are correct okay that's it guys that was my first video on debugging if you liked it please share and subscribe have an amazing day and see you in the next video.